I'm going to show you how to add a new domain in Office 365 so you can get email to a new domain name. Let's start by clicking on the admin tile and it takes us to a new box and from here we're going to go to where it says add a domain. So this is assuming you've already set up your email which we've shown in different videos but now we want to add a new domain because we've registered a new domain name for our company or for whatever it is you need to do. So let's go ahead and use a domain that I own, but I'm not currently using for email. And I've got techpublishing.net, and let's go ahead and click Next. Now it's going to verify that it's not being used anywhere else. And if it fails here, it means that you forgot to take that domain off the other location prior to getting this started. All right, so now we have a couple of options. We can either send a verification email, which is recommended, or we can send a text, create a text record, a TXT record. And I like personally doing the TXT record because uh, then it ends up being trusted by other places where you're sending your email. And plus, sometimes the verification email, you don't always have that set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and choose the add a TXT record. And I know this looks kind of confusing, but it's really not that difficult. So we're going to go ahead and just copy the text here. So I'll say copy to clipboard. It'll take care of it for us. And now we're going to go to Network Solutions. Now I've already logged into my Network Solutions account. And if you don't have Network Solutions, this also works fine with GoDaddy. It's pretty much the same thing. Go ahead and check the box and click Edit DNS next to your domain name. And now we're going to scroll down to where it says Manage Advanced DNS Records. Let's go ahead and click that. And now we're going to go down to where it says Edit a Text or a TXT Record. Let's go ahead and click Edit TXT Records. We're going to add the at symbol. I'm going to change this to 3600, just as it says in the directions. And we're going to paste in what we copied earlier. Let's go ahead and go down here and choose continue and save changes. Make sure it looks just the way it's supposed to and it does. And now it's done. Now we're going to need to wait a few minutes for this to complete. And it sometimes takes five or ten minutes before it'll happen, but sometimes you get lucky and it happens earlier. Let's go ahead and click verify now, although it's only been just a minute. And just as I expected, we uh, are getting an error saying that it's not quite there yet. So we're going to need to wait a few minutes. I'll go ahead and do that, and then hopefully we will get a verification. And this time, after waiting a few minutes, we were successful. It allowed us to move on to the next step. So we've got the option for... Office 365 to set up the rest of our online services. And I don't recommend this because what it'll do is it will move DNS management from wherever you're registered to Office 365. So check the box that says, I'll manage my own DNS records. Thank you. And click Next. So now what we need to do is to create some new records in our network solutions or wherever it is that you have set this up. So let's go ahead and copy this first table here, and we're going to create a new MX record. So let's go back to Advanced DNS in Network Solutions. All right, we're back, and now we need to create an MX record. So we see our MX records, and we need to create a new one. Let's go ahead and delete the records that are in there. And the priority we're going to leave is 10. That just basically means whatever the lowest number is, that's the first place where the email is going to be delivered. Let's go ahead and paste in what we had earlier, but we need to delete a lot of this. So I'll show you what the only things that we need here. So we're going to, by the time we're done, just have techpublishing-net.mail.protection.outlook.com. So in your case, it'll be whatever your domain is there that Microsoft tells you to use, .mail.protection.outlook.com. All right, so once you've got it set just like that, you can go down here and click Save. And we'll just double-check our, our changes here. We've gotten rid of the old mail servers, and we're going to use this new one. 
And now we've got it all saved, so we're in good shape. Let's go back to our admin center. And it's asking us to create a bunch of other CNAME records, as well as another TXT record and SRV records. So these records are all important to have because they verify who it is that you say you are, as well as the CNAME records help us to auto-discover where it is we're going when Outlook wants to connect. So let's go ahead and copy this table to clipboard. And then we'll go ahead and open up a notepad and we'll paste it in so we can see what it looks like. So we've got our TTL, we've got SIP, we've got LINK, all these different things, but we don't need them all. The only one you really need to start with is going to be auto discover. So if we go back to our DNS, and we manage our DNS once again. This time we're going to go click on CNAME records and create a host alias. We've brought back up our notepad, so we're going to have auto discover point to autodiscover.outlook.com. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then we'll go ahead and choose our alias is going to be auto discover. Again, that's what's needed for Microsoft Outlook change our TTL to 3600, which is a half an hour. And we can check the other host actually in this case. And we're going to paste in autodiscover.outlook.com, just like we had on the notepad. Let's go ahead and scroll down to continue. It's good. Let's go ahead and save the changes. And we'll go back to our DNS summary. Now we can see our MX records have shown up. The host alias have not. Typically, you'll have to wait a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, refresh, and then it'll show up. We still need to create another TXT record. So let's go back to our directions, scroll down, and we're going to need to copy to this particular value. Let's go ahead and copy that table and go back to Network Solutions. Let's first get back into our notepad and paste that information in. So all we're going to need here is just this one line. Let's go ahead and copy that line. And we'll go back to editing our TXT record. All right, so we're going to leave the host with the at symbol. We're going to change this to 3600. And we're going to paste in that new line. And then let's go ahead and click Continue and save changes. So it's really not that hard once you understand what it is that you need to do. Unfortunately, Office 365 makes it look a lot more complicated than it needs to be. SRV records, those are, in this particular case, set for SIP, which we're not going to use, and that is going to be for phone. If you're using the um, Office 365 for your phone system, then that would work there. All right, so let's go ahead and save and close, and we're all done with adding our domain. Now let's go ahead and edit a user and add an email record for that user to the new domain. You can see under username and email, we only have the clickx3.onmicrosoft.com. So let's go ahead and click edit, and we're going to add Jane D at techpublishing.net. Now that was not there before until after we clicked the add domain option. So let's go ahead and click add. And we can also set this as the primary, which makes a lot of sense. We don't really want to have people trying to email the onmicrosoft.com account. Let's go ahead and click save. And now it's done. So when Jane emails out, it's going to look like Jane D at techpublishing.net rather than the onmicrosoft.com domain. So that is how we set up a new domain in Office 365.